Thank you for the opportunity to share this information. Doctor, super presentation. Very impressed with uh, some of some of the places that you've worked. We're very close to the town of a thousand people where I grew up, and uh, so and, and have seen um, the same kinds of problems that you are solving. Um, Trying to solve, it, I think we should yeah, say. I think it's important also from a, a looking at an election map in the United States to see the blue and the and the red. And to see that we have a lot to do, uh, perhaps to end this urban uh, rural uh, division that is so much economically driven. Yes, so, very much so. Wow, thank you. Do we have questions? Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Tim. Uh, there, is, there are yes, uh, there are um, a protocol for the round table. There are two main discussion points. Would you mind please to start with the first point and asking uh, the presenter or the practitioners uh, about their opinion? Shall I push the uh, questions or you will start? Oh, go ahead. I just um, have too many papers in my hand here. Go ahead, please. Uh, okay. Everybody having too much paper. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Ali. Specifically, you are from OECD, uh, who is focusing in economic development in Europe or through the world. Uh, in develop and developing country, the importance of innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem leading for economic diversification, and most of the vision of 2030 focusing in economic diversification. From your opinion, what is your shortcut pathway for successful implementation? We're looking for the shortcut. Yeah, I think like the shortcut, you need to look for the new opportunities. You need to look for the diversify the economy, not relying on like uh, export oriented sectors, like especially in like GCC countries, you need to look for new opportunities, new industries, new sectors that can like bring uh, more opportunities for the young generations for like, 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 Tell them that and create new innovative ways that that can help these generation and to like diversify the economy. So this is like the, the main thing, I think. Uh, okay, Eric, what is your opinion? Yes. Um, so again, uh, our our firm we work, for example, very much with communities that are dependent on coal in the United States. So they are really in the identical situation as uh, many of our compatriots in the Middle East are in the sense that they are very dependent on resource extraction as a driver of, of uh, the economy and they're trying to, to reduce that. Um, I would say, first off, I, I you know, sadly, I, I'm sort of like the skunk at the party here to say that <laughs> there really are no shortcuts in an entrepreneurship strategy. I mean, you really need to be thinking about this. This is a 10 to 20 to 30 year strategy that you put in place. Um, because it's you know taken hundreds of years for us to become dependent on coal or to become dependent you know, dependent on oil extraction or whatever sort of resource extraction. You can't just turn that ship so quickly, and so it really is about creating one at a time, two at a time, ten at a time, twelve jobs, fifty jobs at a time, and so um, you know that's one of the challenges we face because there are, there are no easy shortcuts. Uh, but politicians, you know, here in the United States, we we elect new politicians every two or every four years. And you know we're, we're presenting a strategy that is on a 10 to 20 year cycle. So we have this clash between the business cycle and the political cycle. But again, it's very important to say that we're in this for the long haul and we need to avoid promising shortcuts, I believe. I wish I had a shortcut. I'd be a much more successful consultant if I had that shortcut, but I can't promise that. Yes, I need to clarify about the shortcut. Uh, we, everybody knows there are no sh shortcuts, but everything they have shortcut to leverage uh, the outcomes, okay? And with respect to the entrepreneurship and innovation um, uh, ecosystem or which lead to economic diversification, everybody starting uh, their vision uh, from 20, uh, from 
the first vision, for example, uh, to 2010 and then 2020, and now everybody jumping to 2030, then we know there are no shortcuts. Then based on the previous year, the infrastructures, the skills, uh, the uh, tools already implemented, specifically for us as from the GCC point of view, we are a so rich, uh, rich countries, then we don't, um, with regarding to the funds, uh, we have a lot of investors and most of our government uh, in the GCC, it's investing uh, in this part to divert to diverse the economy then i'm asking you what is your opinion after 2020 i mean what is the shortcut for 2030 this is the reason why i'm asking uh, if there are any shortcut for the implementations successful implementations i mean based on your knowledge and experience in the previous year uh well again i the, the strategy that uh, we typically advocate is um to avoid uh, sort of sectoral targeting um, and to encourage everybody to be to consider entrepreneurship that can be from a youth in the community to to anyone success for entrepreneurship depends on passion and people are not going to be successful entrepreneurs unless they're passionate about whatever they're doing so if you're passionate about cooking start a business that's cook about cooking if you're passionate about information technology start an information technology company if you're passionate about manufacturing start a manufacturing company but all of those are equally valid pathways and so what we need to get is many people interested and in wanting to start businesses and hopefully a small section of those who actually go out and start businesses that's the strategy that uh, we typically try to advocate for in rural communities in the United States. Yes, what is your opinion, Professor Amjad, from France perspective? Uh, thank you, Dr. Hanadi. And I think I agree with my co-presenters that there's no shortcut, but what we can do is make it more efficient and reduce the risk. Just uh, have an observation, you know, I've been uh, to uh, the GCC countries and I've been like uh, going around the, 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 the big cities and I see the huge palm trees. And I was wondering how come the, the palm trees has grown here. And, uh, and then I just asked someone, you know, how, did, how long it took, took to grow this one? And someone told me that they haven't been grown. They've been taken, they've been brought from somewhere and they've been planted and, 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 they, and then they just flourish. I think this could be a best example injected, of- uh, Injected, not planted. <laughs> <laughs> So, so bring bring the bring the company technologies uh, which are in the stage of, of of not early stage like you know in, in in the commercialization stage and make them flourish in in and with with the collaboration with the local financing support and everything, and that could be I think a solution. Doctor, one of the things that I've had a chance to see in the southwestern United States oil districts. It's much of the same problem you face of a very rural uh, uh, environment with a substantial amount of money, but not much of a plan to try to diversify the oil industry that they have. Uh, they've been looking hard at using cluster analysis to be able to find groups of businesses, and then talk to them about technologies, uh, about uh, uh, universal problems. All the businesses within this cluster having a specific problem and then, or two or three, and then looking for technologies that might solve those problems because you have a, 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 a known um, uh, 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 locus of need. And some, although a lot of technologies are, are, are discarded, a few are found, analyzed by the, uh, those members of the cluster, and then tried out to find out whether they will, in fact, benefit the cluster. And that process has been successful, sometimes with targeted technologies, things they thought of, uh, and sometimes wild cards. But it was a way to find a way to bring un, uh, unexpected technology growth in different areas to a, a, a community that had uh, completely dominated by the oil and gas industry. Uh, it might be an interesting thing to think about because it seems to have worked uh, in a, an environment uh, very similar to a number of your member countries. Yeah, again, I think that that's a that's a very in, inter interesting set of strategies. Another strategy we're starting to see quite a bit in the United States is a big focus on talent. Uh, you know, if you're building a community, you know, if you have smart people, 
good things will start to happen. So a lot of communities are starting to go out and instead of recruiting companies, they're re trying to recruit people into the community. So again, I spoke of this, this state of Vermont earlier. Well, now Vermont, the state of Vermont will pay people $10,000, give them a grant for $10,000 if they move there. They have technology skills and they move there, they'll just give them a cash grant uh, as part of a strategy to attract uh, innovators and entrepreneurs. So we're starting to see those kinds of strategies as well. So the cluster strategy, but now we're also seeing people try to focus on the talent development and talent attraction strategies as well. I would add the one point on this. I think uh, one of the strategy could be of knowledge transfers rather than like a mature technology transfer. So you can have an exchange of like, you know, the young, uh, young capital, uh, the knowledge capital you have, the students and the new entrepreneurs have some kind of an exchange program with uh, a mature uh, ecosystems where they can learn uh, in, in, in terms of a short accelerator program and, and, and then develop it uh, back home. Additional comment I just want to add, like in, in terms of diversification. So I just, just give you an example of the, like uh, India, like um, um, India, they wanted to diversify their economy and they just wanted to uh, uh, build the shipbuilding, like in, in, diversify to increase the shipbuilding industries. And then they start this, uh, but they don't have the domestic capability to do that, like the, the, the advanced shipbuilding. Then they imported a lot of components in this, in, into, from the, to build these ships. And then at the end, the, the price of the, like the new ship is uh, higher than that what's already in the market. So they, they, there is, in terms of competitiveness, like the, 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 they cannot compete other countries like uh, production. So these kind of things also like need to be taken into, into account. Like they need to, you need to know like the domestic capability that you have in the country in order to diversify the economy. You need to have which industry that you need to diversify in. Like this is like really important. So you, whether that you have the domestic capability to do that, like the, uh, the, the, and in order to do that, like you need to build the human capital for your country. Thank you so much, Ali. Thank you so much for all the presenter team. Uh, you can closing. Uh, you can closing the sessions, please, and transfer uh, the chairing to uh, Mr. Nasser. Yes. Uh, hi again, uh, everybody. Uh, now we will um, uh, be shifting to the session four. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mrs. Agnes. Uh, I believe she's a lady, Agnes. Uh, she is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 